Hi, and welcome to this Crochet for Complete Beginners workshop. Let's make a washcloth. Uh, I decided on a washcloth because it's something a bit more useful than just a sampler. And all of the stitches in this tutorial are the ones you need to get started. So here we go. So I'm using a four millimeter hook and some cotton yarn because this is a washcloth cotton seems the thing to use and this is a drops muscat in mercerized cotton it's a good inexpensive basic yarn for this job so let's start the very beginning seems like a good place to start unravel this a little and um, everything pretty much unless you're doing a magic ring and ignore this for a complete beginner starts with a, uh, a slip knot so this is how I do a slip knot I have the working yarn in my left hand here and the tail in my right and with the tail I'm going to I start with the the yarn draped over my index finger on my left hand and then I bring the tail round the finger over to the top and cross over that yarn and then take it off my finger and then the tail I put behind the circle that I've made and I reach in to that circle and pull out with my hook that little bar of yarn that was there whilst holding tightly on the left hand to the two strands okay and then to tighten it I just pull up with my fingers towards the hook now I want this not to be too tight and so when it's on the shaft of the hook like this I want to be able to move it easily up and down okay and the next thing is how to hold the yarn now there are lots of ways to do this this is how I like to do it so I've got my working yarn over to my left here place this over my hand like this and then under my index finger and then over the top of my index finger like that might take you a minute just to get that same and then I curl my little finger and my ring finger around the yarn to keep it in place and then my middle finger and my thumb are going to just hold that slip knot and all the way through I'm going to reposition my thumb and my middle finger so that they're holding pretty much the fabric in place that we're going to make that's right by the base of the hook like this. Okay, so the very first thing to do is the hook goes under the yarn, we call that a yarn over, and then it pulls through that new loop of fabric through the existing slip knot that we made. And there is the first stitch. And every chain is made in exactly the same way. So let's do another yarn over and pull through with the hook pointing downwards. That's two chain, okay? And then I'll do another one, yarn over and pull the yarn through the existing chain so there are three you can see them quite clearly there and let's do another one and you can see I'm repositioning all the time my middle finger and my thumb so that I've got some control of where the yarn the fabric is and the yarn is and the hook is and yarn over and pull through and I do turn my hook down to the floor every time I pull that through and again pull through yarn over pull through if you're a complete beginner this is probably really frustrating because it's taking you a while to get that pull through but go back to the beginning start again if you need to but for now I'm going to chain until I have 26 chains and you can count these easily this is quite easy to, to see the little V's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and what can we do 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 
25 and 26 okay so there are 26 of those lovely little V's on there then I'm going to go back the other way to make the first row so I'm going to turn this chain over now I'm hoping that you can see on the on the front there were V's and on the back there are these little loops now I think of them as being like a little bit like Loch Ness Monster these little humps that stick up one two three you can just see them here four now it's into there that i'm going to do this first row this first row is the hardest of all after this it gets much easier so ignoring that very very first one there because it's just too close to the hook and that's only on this round i'm going to go into this one here which is the next one so there's the first one i'm ignoring it second one is there and from the front to the back, I'm going to push my hook front to back through that little bump. And then do the same thing, a yarn over and pull through. And now I have two chains, two hoop loops really, on my hook. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of those. Okay, now that is called a double crochet. In American terminology, that is called a single crochet so let's do another one so there's the next bump push front to back with the hook yarn over and pull through that bump there and you have two chains two loops on the hook yarn over and pull through both of those and that completes the double crochet or the single crochet if you're American so let's do it again front to back of that little bump and it is tricky the first row. Yarn over and pull through that bump. And then yarn over and pull through two. And that's the third double crochet. And on the top, you can see here, you're making more of these little Vs, which is just exactly what we want. So I'll do another one, and then I'm gonna speed up a little bit. So through the bump, and yarn over and pull through one. And then yarn over and pull through two, and that's your fourth double crochet. And you can see four chains one, two, three, four. Okay, now go all the way along the chain, and then I will meet you again when I have reached the very end. Okay, so now we're at the point where I just have three stitches left to do, three little bumps at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and do those and you can see actually your fabric is probably looking exactly like that some really nice neat little stitches so let's go into these last three one by now you'll be absolutely brilliant at it says so she okay two and then the very last one I can just see one little bump there you go into there and yarn over pull through and yarn over pull through two and I end up with quite a nice flat edge actually it's difficult to see it at this point but that is quite a nice flat edge okay so I know I've reached the end okay now I want to just turn the yarn over and let me just show you the very top of the work you've done there's this lovely line of little V's that look a bit like a knitted stitch um, and what you're going to do in this row and subsequent rows is to go through both parts of the V the front and the back of the V so let's go in the very closest one to the hook and put your hook through both of those parts and then pull yarn over and pull through those parts and again two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through both and you go all the way along in the same way so let's just flip that so you can see I'm going through both parts of the stitch and yarn over pull through that and then yarn over and pull through two and again like we did before go all the way along making sure you get through both parts of that stitch so here we go and I will join you again 
when we have reached the end of the second row. Okay, so now I am, I'm at the point in the second row where I've got three stitches left to do. So again, go in through the front and back of that stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and again, front to back, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two. And then there's a very last, if you're not sure, just look what your fabric's doing. Because that's, if you looked at this and thought, oh, I've re maybe reached the end, actually, if you carried on, you'd end up with a slanty piece of work. So there's definitely another one to do here. And there they are, front and back, through both, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through both. And then the top of that work, you can see it much more clearly now. It's nice and flat. Okay, now you turn the work over and you go back again. And that's really all you're doing until you have pretty much got a square piece of fabric. And what I mean by that is that your fabric is as deep this way as it is wide this way. Um, so you pretty much want a square and then I'll show you how to do the loop. So I will see you soon. So here we are back at the point where we've got something new to do. So I have pretty much done enough rows to make this washcloth almost square. And the way I test that is just to fold along the diagonal like that. And you can see I'm pretty much just a couple of rows short of this being a square piece of fabric now. So we're at the end of that last row there. Let's turn the work round. And where you, you have been just going back again with double crochet, you're going to chain and I think 20 is a good number for a nice size loop. So that's two, three, four, five. It's exactly what you did to start the whole thing off after the slip knot. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That looks inordinately long, actually. That's a good, that's a good length for hanging somewhere. So then I go back to the beginning of the row before the chain happened. And there's my very first stitch. So I'm going to go in to that stitch with the hook bring the yarn over and pull that new loop through the fabric. Now, if I was going to double crochet, I'd do another yarn over and pull through. But instead of doing that, because this is a slip stitch, just carry on. So that new stitch that has formed is now going to stay on the hook and, the, and pull through that first loop. And then I can now go along that row, along all those Vs, in the same way that I have been doing with double crochet. So off I go. And then again, you're very familiar with this now. All these double crochets. Like that. I'm going to join you back at the point where I'm at the end of this row. Okay, so here we are at the very end of this last row. And I'm going to do the very last stitch. And just finish that off. And then to tie the thing up, now this is normally attached to a ball of yarn, but I've cut this earlier. I just pull this through here like that. And then I would snip it with scissors and then just pull this through and give it a good tug. And then with um, some sort of needle, this is a particularly good one. Um, and it's called a wool needle. And it's a pe the only people I know who do this are a company called Pony. And I got this one. Um, online. Um, I'm just going to thread this through here and then weave in and out of stitches, just sewing them in until this tail is buried. Um, so basically, and I, I would do the same with this end as well, and then basically you have yourself, instead of just a sampler square of the first stitches you ever learn, you have yourself a cotton washcloth or 
um, a mat you could use this to hold on to pot handles if they got hot um, so I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial and look out because I will be doing another tutorial which will teach you trebles and then on to granny squares uh, thank you so much for watching